My name is WWE superstar Sonya Deville, and I'm here on Toy Quest 101. My name is Ileana, this is my father Miguel. And what a special day it is today, because not only did we just hit 2 million views, but what a way to celebrate it than with our very own Sonya Deville, our first superstar in the second half of this year. Thank you so much for being on the show. I'm excited to be on. This is kind of special because not everyone knows yet, but we go way back. We do, we do You go were way one back. of my first ever coaches in the mixed martial arts world. I'm excited. I'm excited, cool. very proud of this moment because she's on this show and a lot that she has accomplished throughout her life and we're gonna talk about that today. But because we have so much stuff, let's just get started. Let's okay? do it. All right, so the way it works, Sonia, is we are going to open up WWE mystery minis from Funko. So we have series one right here. If you wanna grab this box right here, you too, Liana, and show the camera. And we have a lot of different uh, competitors here that we could pick from. Now, obviously we don't know who's gonna be the surprise in the box, but we're gonna eventually open them up. And we also have series two mystery minis right here, which we're gonna open up. And they have different characters here. And some of these are Walmart exclusives. So what do you think about Ooh, that? Ooh, this is exciting. All right. So we are gonna dive deep uh, in the past and the present time and maybe the possible future. So let's talk about when we first met, okay? This was way, way back. I believe you were 17? 16. 16. Because my mom used to drive me to the gym. 16, Sonia Deville walks into an MMA school. Now, I just wanna put this into perspective because back in the day, uh, the UFC just started to get popular, but Dana White did not believe in women in the UFC. Uh, right. Ronda Rousey was not a name uh, in the sport. And I think the biggest names were Gina Carano and Cyborg. Yeah. And you decided at the age of 16 to walk in into a predominantly male sport and sign up for MMA, which consists of jujitsu, judo, boxing, fighting. Uh, what made you walk into that gym knowing that the sport was catered to men and not women? I remember I was sitting at my kitchen table at my mom's house and I was, and we were talking and I was like, I was playing sports all through high school and I wanted to do something more. And I was sick of soccer, I was sick of basketball, I was sick of lacrosse. And I was like, what could I do? And I discovered fighting. I always knew it was a thing, but I never had seen women in fighting. And then I literally, I remember Googling it and I saw Gina Carano and Chris Cyborg and I was like, whoa. And what a war they had. That fight was ridiculous. But I was like, women can do this too. This is insane. So I was like, mom, I, I, wanna, I wanna go to like an MMA gym. But if you remember at the time, MMA gyms weren't really a thing like you could find a boxing gym that might have some jujitsu or you could find a jujitsu school that might have some stand up and striking but to find like the mma gyms we have now it it's really hard to do so she took me to liberty boxing which is the gym that i met you at and i'll never forget i walked in the front door and i asked to speak with the owner and um oh, what's his name short little bald Italian guy well he was the mma instructor that's phil bandonato oh okay yes. phil bandonato which so, is still my coach to this day how weird yes yep so i walked up to him and he was you know an intimidating little italian man and i was like i, I want to fight mma and he was like well, you do do you he just kind of looked me up and down he goes oh, he goes okay he goes uh do this workout with me i wasn't even in workout clothes i remember my mom being like uh, uh do you want me to go get you like and i was like no it's fine i'll just do it so he put me through this ridiculously rigorous workout it was like high intensity cardio and I remember being like dead at the end of it and he looked me up and down and he goes okay you can train here it was it was like this initiation I didn't even know was taking place at the time but it led to one of the most amazing experiences of my life which was ended up training with you and some other great guys at the gym and it was my first exposure to mixed martial arts and it's definitely an awesome story because that's where we met and i remember when you walked in obviously you were the only girl i i, I believe you had braids and you had like a little alan iverson little <laughs> i was thing so going obsessed on. with alan iverson yeah. <laughs> i had those braids in all the time well you walked into the gym and 
when you took, uh, I think it was judo. Uh, we were doing jujitsu or judo. I remember you being the only girl there and all the guys were kind of just looking and you, you hear some whispers and I was in the front with my instructor. I was one of the higher belts there yeah. and I was just kind of watching what was going on. But you could tell they they didn't take it seriously. You know, they, they saw you walk in and they were like, oh, there's a girl in here and that was kind of about it. Um, Ileana, what's your question based on that? Why is it important to keep following your dreams and even when people do it you? Yeah, that's a really good question. Why is it important to keep following my dreams even when people doubt me? I mean, a prime example is I'll never forget being in that jujitsu and judo class and literally the boys wanted nothing to do with me. And I think it was <laughs> a big age thing as well because they, they were like 16 year old boys, 17 year old boys. They saw this girl in here. And the last thing I remember, oh my God. And so at the end of every class we would, um, we would grapple. So we would compete and try to submit each other and stuff like that. And none of the boys wanted to go with me because not even that they thought I was so good or anything like that, but it was, God forbid, they get tapped out by a girl. It would kill their ego. Yes, their ego. It would goes. kill their ego. And I'll never forget, um, he's going to kill me, but uh, grappling with little Chris and uh, a couple of the other guys. And I, I would tap them out. I would submit them. I was, I was tough as nails, I, you know, and I was on their level. And for them to get beat by a girl was just like, unfathomable and so it was funny going through that progression and eventually getting to a point where they respected me which we'll talk about later but it, it took a lot to get there so if there's a message I have for anybody out there and it's not just a mixed martial arts it's not just female athletes in a male dominated sport but it's for anybody that doesn't feel like they fit in you're usually doing something right if that's the case because it ended up being, you know, one of the biggest parts of my life and it's taught me so much. And, um, you know, I, I kind of liked being the odd man out because it was a challenge for me. And it was like, oh, you you don't think I can do it? Okay. Yeah, and I, I remember watching you uh, the first couple weeks and you were very competitive, you were driven, you had a lot of heart. And I seen the guys kind of worry. Uh, and, you know, and I know we mentioned Chris and Mike and some of the guys that were in that tournament. They're still competing to this day. And I can't tell you how proud they are of you watching Aww. you on TV and stuff. And they did tell me to say hi to you for them. They're the best. Um, but, you know, when you walk in there uh, with that mentality and that drive, it's something special. And I think me, along with the instructors, we caught that. And I, I can never forget the day that uh, you came up to me and you said, I want to fight. And I looked at you and I smiled. And I mean, I've obviously helped you uh, when you walked in there, uh, when nobody else was kind of uh, helping you, Without just me and the instructors. But when you said that, I believed in you. And um, I remember saying, first things first, we gotta get you ready for a tournament. And that's kind of where you were gonna test uh, really where your heart was at, uh, your mentality, if this is something you really wanted to do. What made you say that you wanted to be a fighter and why? T to me, fighting was like, it, it was a lot of proving myself. I, I felt like um, I, I always wanted to do something big and something special. It was like s school sports weren't enough. Nothing was quite enough. And I always wanted to do something that, that felt big and it meant something. And to me, that was fighting because, I mean, what is more real life? What's more cutthroat? and everything's on the line than literally getting inside a locked cage and fighting the other person. It's just so raw and so real and it, it's just what I gravitated to. I just right. wanted that that fierceness. And I was also, you know, I was a, I'm Italian and I grew up in New Jersey and I was a feisty kid and I loved um, competition and all that kind of stuff. So it was a lot of things um, kind of culminated into one into making me want to fight. But And that's super awesome. Let's get started uh, opening up some rounds here of toys. Um, so let's start with uh, series one of the mystery minis. So Sonia, the first question I have for you, out of all the characters that you could pick in the back, which one did you want to get and why? Gonna have to go with Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar, that's a good pick. I love Brock Lesnar, the beast. Let's see. What about you, Liana? Who do you want to get? John Cena, Seth Rollins, and Roman Reigns. John Cena, right here. We got Seth Rollins, and we got Roman Reigns, which is right here in the middle. Me, personally, I gotta go with Bret the Hitman Hart. 
Okay. Big Heart fan. Uh, I also would like to get, let's see. I like Dusty Rhodes. Kind of an old school guy, love Dusty. What a guy. So, Sonia, you're our guest. Why don't you start first? Let's see who you got out of your blind boxes. You can just tear them right up. Rip this right open. Go ahead, Liana, you can start too. And I'll start, let's see who we get. Dun, 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 dun. Kevin Nash. Yeah. Okay, I'm not mad about this one. That's for sure. <laughs> so just show the camera right there. Kevin Nash. That is awesome. Awesome, Look Kevin Nash. Now these guys are little vinyl figures. Uh, they're pretty cool. Uh, rumor has it that we might get finally a Sonia Deville action what? figure. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I don't know if we can confirm or deny that. We don't have to, but just know that we are looking forward to something like that All in I'm the near future. Is that's what they're telling me? But you know what? Who knows? Well, we will be on the lookout for it because you know me and Liana are definitely going to go buy it, right? All right, now who did you get? Oh! You got Brock Lesnar? Yes. Come on! <laughs> so we got the one Sonia wanted, Brock Lesnar. Let's just put these guys up here. They might not stand. There you go. There we go. Now check out Brock Lesnar. He's got his little sword in the middle tattoo, his little so flat top. Cool. And he also got his little beast tattoo in the back. Um, here he is, right next to Kevin Nash. So, so far we got one of the ones we wanted to pick. Right? right? All right, see. so let's go to my guy. Let's see who I got. And we got a second Brock Lesnar. Two so we Brock Lesnars? Man, if, if one Brock Lesnar is bad, imagine two of them Oof. in the WWE. Stranger danger. I know, that is a big boy. Looking forward to hopefully having him back in the UFC as well. All right, let's get back to the questions. So, tournament day. You were the only female in the jiu-jitsu tournament. Um, obviously, I was coaching you that day. Um, so, Eliana, why don't you ask your first question? How do you feel entering the tournament? Walk us through your thoughts and how did you feel being the only girl? Yeah, I mean, um, I'll never forget you guys coming up to me and being like, we're going to do this in-house jiu-jitsu tournament. Like, this is where you, we're really gonna find out if this girl wants to fight or not. I knew that was the thought going into this whole thing. Like I knew what everyone was thinking. They were like, okay, this is make or break for her. So of course I was like, yeah, I want in on this tournament. And um, I was super excited. Obviously I was the only girl in the tournament. There were no other girls in the jujitsu class. Um, but I was like, you know what? This is my time. This is, this is the start of it all. I wanna go in here and I'm gonna get first place. Yeah, and it was, it was definitely a thing to see because our gym was huge to begin with. And we had a judo tournament, which I competed in that day. Uh, and we also had the big jujitsu tournament uh, that day as well. And if you want a picture, we had a huge mat space and then we had an MMA cage. Now inside of the cage were the heavyweights, the big boys, people like Brock Lesnar, Kevin Nash, going in, uh, in that cage because obviously there's a fence around it, nobody could get hurt. And I remember, your mom, your lovely mom. I love your mom so much. Oh, that man. day, I swear, I thought she was gonna kill me, but she came in, <laughs> she said hi to me, and the first thing she said, she looked over behind us and said, that looks dangerous. Is Sonia gonna be okay? And I was like, you know what? Don't worry about it. She's very good, she's competitive. If anything happens, I'm sure she'll tap. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> um, Wait, I have a funny story before you go, go further. Ahead. Before the tournament started, I was, I mean, I had only been training jiu-jitsu for what? A couple months? A couple months, A couple yeah. months, I don't know the exact. I can't, I went up to you, I came and found you and I go, can you teach me a takedown? Yes. Because I, I, I remember this like it was yesterday. I knew submissions, I was good on the ground, but I just had this like epiphany and I was like, wait a second, I don't know that many takedowns. How do we start? And like, this is how new I was in the entire game of mixed martial arts at the time. And you were like, yeah. And so you were showing me these quick little leg sweeps and trips. And I was like, I just remember being like so overwhelmed. Like, all right, if I could just remember one of these and just get the person down, once we get to the ground, I'll be fine. But that's really funny. It was funny. And I remember teaching you a couple of the moves and you did take down, I think you took everybody down in a tournament, which is funny, which we'll get into a little later <laughs> on. Um, so, Walk us through 
your first match after I just got done telling your mom <laughs> not to worry, you know, if she... Worst is, case scenario, she'll tap. Worst case, worst, yeah, worst case scenario, she'll tap. If she goes to sleep, you really don't know what happens. You wake up kind of lost, but everything ends up okay. Walk us through the first match and please tell the audience what happened. <laughs> so, ding, 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 the first match is me and this boy who, by the way, was a little... I'm not gonna curse, but he was not very nice in class. He hated going with me because I would tap him out. And he was very, like, I could feel the energy in his body. Like, he wanted to beat me so bad, right? So, ding, 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 we, we get to the ground. We're, we're kind of going back and forth, and he puts me in a triangle. And I remember thinking, okay, this thing's really tight, but I'm not tapping. I refuse to tap out. Well, a couple moments later, <laughs> I passed out in his lap and um, I just remember waking up and coming to and being like, what, and I locked eyes what with happened? my mom and I was like <laughs> looking at her like, what just happened to me? Because when you wake up from being passed out or knocked out, I don't know if it's ever happened to any of you, but it's, it's a really weird feeling of like, what just happened to me? It's almost like you're dreaming of when you're sleeping, it's like, it's very weird. But anyway, I, I woke up, I locked eyes with my mom. My mom looked like she was about to cry. She was crying. She looked she like was. she was about to die. She was. And I was just like, what happened? And I was like, kind of laughing. And she was like, oh my God, my baby, my baby. And then I remember you grabbed my feet. You were like lifting my feet in the air. There's video footage of all this, by the way. So we'll make yes, sure to we're, that out. We're gonna be definitely showing that video. <clears throat> um, I remember you going out. I remember me sitting you down and waking you up and your mom gave me the evilest look I've ever seen in any woman in my life. Um, but you did go out, you didn't tap. And I should have knew better because the type of person you are, you, you wouldn't tap. I mean, that's just you. Yeah. You're always trying to get to the next level no matter what it takes and I should have knew better and I totally jinxed myself. But the first match you were just gone. So, Liana, why don't you go ahead with your question? What made you keep going after you lost your first match in that way? I, so that's a good question. I remember coming to after being passed out and I remember the first words out of my mouth were, can I still compete? Cause I was so concerned that I had just lost. I was like, I didn't understand how the tournament worked. I didn't know anything. This was all so new to me, but the first question I asked Matt, uh, Sensei Dave and you was, can I still compete? And they were kind of just like, uh, yeah, I guess if you're, it, if you're it okay. It was double elimination, yes. It was so, double elimination, yep. But I didn't know any of that and I was freaking out and I thought it was all over and so that was my main concern. But I really, really just wanted to come back and win. So much of this was definitely to prove myself, not only to the boys in my gym and not only to my coaches, but to myself. Like I needed to know that I was tougher than that and that I could come back from that. And it was it was a hard blow to my ego, for sure. And so I just needed to prove to myself that this wasn't the end, it was just the beginning. And that is awesome. And we're gonna, we're gonna dive deep into what happened next, but we're gonna pause there, leave you guys in suspense, because we're gonna go on our second round of opening up some Funko Mystery Minis. We're gonna go with the same one, Series 1. Let's do it. Um, again, I still have my Brett the Hitman heart that I didn't get, my Dusty Rhodes. I wouldn't even mind a sting. So, Sonia, once again, you're our guest. You could start off first. Okay. Uh, we got Brock Lesnar. We already so got who do Brock. Get so, I want Gold Dust. Gold Dust? He's a good like friend Gold of Dust. mine. He's a mentor of mine. So, if I get Gold Dust, I'm going to be happy. By the way, Gold Dust and Mandy, some of the pictures they took for WWE were How awesome. Great. Epic. Epic match. So, let's see. Oh, Ileana, look. John Cena. <laughs> cool, right? Yeah. yeah. Ileana's favorite is John du, 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 du. Cena. And what, what a guy John Cena is. I mean, he does so much for the community and he kids. Does. And what an amazing athlete. We he, love John Cena. He is awesome. All right, Ileana, I'm gonna go ahead and open this one. And, uh-oh, I see pink shoes. Oh, yes. you got your pink. The Hitman. Right there boy. he is. Brett the Hitman Hart. My mom had such a crush on Brett the Hitman Hart. I really think the only reason why she let me watch wrestling was because of this guy right here. I believe uh, it. But I love Brett the Hitman Hart, his entire family. Uh, Natty's now a huge uh, superstar in the WWE. She's awesome. Uh, we love Natty, especially in Total Divas. Natty's so great. Good. We call She's her like awesome. the mom of locker room. Yeah. She's just like always wants to help everybody. She's a sweetheart. <laughs> 
Who'd you get? Who'd you get? <gasps> oh, a second Kevin Nash. Oh, baby, Kevin Nash is popular today. Look at the Brock's and the Kevin's. Can we do like a face off between the Kevin's and the Brock's? We can, we can. That's sick. That is pretty cool. Who do you think would win that? Man, that's tough. Oh. That's tough. I'm gonna have to say Brock Lesnar on that yeah, one. Yeah, me too. It's okay. Uh, there. All right. So let's get back to this amazing story. So I remember you sitting down, like you said, and telling me the first thing that came out of your mouth was, "What happened? Can we? Can I keep going? I, this is. This can't be it." And I remember I was kneeling down, and I just looked at you and said. It's the past, it's done. We need to just work harder now. Forget about what happened. Let's step it up a notch. And I remember you did look at your mom. Your mom looked at me. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna kill you. Yep, and you looked at me and something changed in your look. Like you could tell, like you just got, I don't know if you got worried, I don't know what it was. It felt like you got fired up. Um, like you had something to prove. And the next, uh, round started um walk us through what happened in your second match that set a record for the tournament <laughs> um so i think the emotion that i was feeling after i had lost that one was like you're almost like when you're a kid like and i never got in street fights or anything like that so i wasn't like hardened to the reality of like losing really like i would lose a soccer game a basketball game but that's a little different than losing a fight or a tournament you know but when i got choked out i i like almost got more, like, I almost realized, like, wait a second, he just choked me out, like, and I, I had less remorse, and I had less, like, empathy, and I, more, like, just straight aggression, like, I wanted, I wanted to beat all these kids now, like, it was, like, it definitely was, like, a knob that turned, but anyway, so, um, the second round, ding, 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 I'll never forget, I was, I was standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with this, um, this kid, I don't remember his name, and I literally pulled his head down, grabbed a guillotine, and jumped guard immediately. And he tapped probably within, I don't know, it was 13 seconds. It was or... under, I believe it was under 13 seconds. Sonia had the fastest <laughs> submission of the night right after she just got put to sleep. Yeah. And let me tell you, there were so many people watching this tournament. There was a lot and of people there. And that whole gym went nuts. <laughs> I mean, when you look at the video, you'll see some people in the background, just their faces, their jaws just dropped. And I went nuts. I started hitting the mat. I was so pumped up. It was so cool to watch. And it was just, it was just amazing. Um, especially coming from you know, what just happened the first round. So Yana, what's your question? After you, your big win and having the fastest submission in the tournament, how did you do in your other matches? So um, after that match, I believe, was there one more and then? Uh, there was two or three more. And two then, three more. yeah. One, I don't even remember the victories, but I won the next two or three. And then the final match. Yep. So you won every single match after that, and you got to the finals. This match was for the championship. Um, now, the crazy part about this is, again, the first round, you got your first elimination. Mm -hmm. You came in the second round, had the fastest submission. You went through three other boys, yep. and now you're in the finals with the same guy who beat you in the first round and put you to sleep. That's where we're at in this story now. What was the outcome of that match? Okay, so going into this, I remember thinking, you cannot let this kid beat you. He put me to sleep in front of my family, my friends, my coaches. I was devastated. And to me, it was the most important thing in the world to win this match. So, ding, ding, ding. I remember it going back and forth, back and forth. And I ended up beating him for and the won sweet the entire revenge. Entire tournament. First place in the entire tournament. It was amazing. And uh, one of the reasons why we want to highlight this story is so you guys could see the amount of diversity of the challenges that she had. She never quit and she kept going. And what an amazing story it was. Thank you. I loved it. It's it's so weird thinking back at it because none of that felt like what it was in the time. In the moment, it just felt like 
oh my God, you, I have to keep going, I have to keep going, I have to keep going. And um, we, we have a little inside joke where we say that I'm the comeback kid because yes, we were in kid. such a crazy deficit and we came out and we prevailed. But I couldn't have done it without my coach Miguel and, my, and uh, Sensei Dave and all the other coaches there. But um, I definitely think it's an important lesson for everyone that just because you're down, don't mean you're out. That's, that's right, that's True right. story. So you guys know, lesson learned. So let's get to our third round of mystery minis. Now these are series two. Uh, as you can see here, we have some Walmart exclusive. Now we have different characters in the back that we could get in our selection. Sonia, who do you want to get out of these guys in this box? Now these are a little different. I like these a little bit better than the other ones. And we do have some exclusives on the bottom. I'm going to go with The Rock. The Rock, all right. The Rock is right here. FYI, The Rock is the number one person we ever want to have on this show. Oh, <laughs> yeah. We love The Rock. He's and best. Ileana, who do you want to have? Um, the Twins Bell. Oh, the Bella Twins. The Bella right Twins, here. yes. And I actually met one of the Bellas at San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, it was Nikki Bella. And I had my phone, I was video chatting Ileana. And when I got up to me, she was like, who are you video chatting? I'm like, it's my daughter. And she snatched the phone from me and had a total conversation with, with uh, That's Ileana. That's so cool. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. She was such a sweetheart. She gave me an autograph, we took a picture. But for her to do that was, was awesome. She didn't have to do that. I didn't right. think she was gonna do that, but it was pretty cool. So I wanna get Hulk Hogan right here. I'm a big Hulk Hogan fan. Uh, I actually met him at a Comic-Con as well. He put me in a headlock for our picture. Awesome. Um, and I also want to go, let's go with Roddy Piper in honor of Ronda Rousey. <laughs> uh, let's get him too. He's one of the exclusives. And also on the bottom, you see Macho Man Randy Savage and Hacksaw Jim Duggan. There are some of the exclusives that we could get. So Sonia, go ahead and start us Rip off with our open. first uh, box. Un unboxing of these mystery minis. And Eliana, you can go second. Oh my God, John Cena just keeps following oh, me. Oh man, our second John Cena. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, do you need help? Dun, 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 That's dun, nice. So, Sonia, why don't you hold up both John Cenas to the camera so they can see the difference. Dun, 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 dun. Pretty cool. So one, he's without a shirt, and the other one, he has his blue shirt where you can't see me. You can't see me, never give up. That's right. Look at that. All right, let me go do the second one while Liana's opening up hers. And I got another John Cena. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, so we got a couple repeats John now. Cena. Usually, Sonia, so you know the repeats that we do get, we do giveaways for and we give them to the kids. So, oh, that's awesome. Which is kind of neat. And who'd you get? Oh. You go, you. Now wait, who is this? This has to be, I believe this is yeah. Brie. Brie. Yeah, I think this is Brie Bella. Yeah. Yep, because Nikki has the jersey on. So this is Brie Bella. We got one of the women in the WWE. And talk about the women women movement. We're going to talk about that later on. But wow, what a ride has it's been for you girls in uh, the WWE. They just announced the first ever all women pay-per-view event last Monday. Yep. Uh, which is going to be scheduled for October around my birthday. We are so excited. I know Eliana is excited. You guys always put on a show. Every time there's a new pay-per-view, you just guys, you guys just take it to another level. And we're so excited for that. I mean, that's amazing. It's super exciting. And there's one word for it. Evolution. Evolution. Hi, this is Eliana from Toy Quiz 101. Thank you for watching part one of our 30 day E episode with Sonic the Bear. To watch part two, click here.